Uh, hello friends, uh, in this video I want to talk about uh, Office 365 data retention and um, it becomes more and more important in uh, companies, you know, to be able to preserve the data and make sure it doesn't get deleted for specific uh, periods of time. And here I want to show you a short demonstration how to configure uh, some retention policies and give you some tips. Um, just just some general tips in regards to this uh, thing. So let's start to it. When I uh, go to Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, right, uh, I navigate to uh, office.com or to admin center and then I select um, compliance area. Before it was one thing, security and compliance, now it's separate. So if I click on compliance, I get to the area where everything to do with compliance is uh, uh, separated in this area. And here I see a couple of things like uh, compliance manager, data classification, connections, etc. And if I look on the policies here, right, you know, I see different policies and on the data, I see data loss prevention and retention. And retention, this is what I'm interested in. Uh, so in order to create a, a new policy, I just click here, I give it a name, a simple retention policy. Uh, then I can give it a description. Uh, I uh, can, uh, let's say for compliance reasons, I need to preserve data for seven years or maybe like let's keep it to three years um, and then uh, this part here retain the content based on when it was created so it means in SharePoint or in Exchange or in, in Teams well, basically uh, each object when it's created it has this uh, creation date thing so basically uh, from this creation date for three years the item will remain in place so it, it will not be possible to delete it based on the creation date this this could be important sometimes uh, then uh, this part here do you want to delete it after this time uh, there is one more thing, uh, it's, which is available also in Office 365, and it's called deletion policy. Let's say your company wants to preserve some content and then to remove it to make sure you know it, it's not available any longer for this or that reason. So in order to do that, um, it's possible to set it to delete. So then it will work in combination there will be one policy so basically one rule that retains the content for three years and then there will be another rule that actually deletes it um, and in this case i'm not going to to delete it but it, it uh, would be possible you know um, then um, there are some advanced settings we can we can have a look at this uh, direct content that uh, has specific words or phrases. Um, yeah, so basically it's like a filter you can set up in order to preserve, let's say, uh, information which is related to, um, I don't know, to, to tax. So if, if there is something that uh, has a tax in the phrase, a word, uh, then this content will be preserved. Um, yeah. So something like this, uh, then uh, let me go back, no, um, I'm not going to use the advanced settings for now, uh, I just use the simple ones, and then if I click next, I get to this area where I can select different options like Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, uh, Groups, uh, Skype, uh, etc. So depending on your company, you know, you can have some 
uh, reasons to keep information uh, like which is stored in uh, Teams channel messages, which I doubt, but you know, some once in a while it, it might be required. Or if uh, you need to keep your emails for specific uh, amount of time, then you can click on this one. Um, you know, and then you can also exclude some recipients. Let's say if you have some service account or maybe some accounts which you use for um, archiving. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, you can um, select recipients or you can uh, choose only specific recipients. So let's say you have a use case when you have to store all emails um, which go to accounting mailbox. Uh, then you you go here and choose a specific account in mailbox and then only this object uh, will be under this policy so um, basically it's like a filter you select which objects you want to to uh, use and uh, then you click next uh, to, to accept it so in my case uh, I'm going to set it up for all defaults so for exchange sharepoint onedrive and office 365 groups uh, and uh, then you see um, first if you see here it's not immediate it could take up to one day to apply in the, the policy uh, sometimes you know normally it takes just you know within one hour it will be applied but um, microsoft uh, takes care and, and tells sometimes that you know, you have to wait for up to 24 hours um, for everything to propagate. Uh, because in reality, this retention settings, they are based on exchange uh, online. So whatever the propagation time is done in exchange online, you can also um, use it here. Um, then uh, let's see, we have uh, selected locations. Uh, we have uh, selected retention period and give it a name. Then I click here to create the policy. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit for this policy to be created. And it's done. It's as simple as that. So now, basically, uh, after this policy is applied, uh, normally it takes, you know, it could take uh, up to a day of, uh, to apply it. Uh, after this policy is done and someone deletes a message in an uh, exchange mailbox or in OneDrive or in SharePoint site or, or in Office 365 group, this message will still remain. So it will not be really deleted. Um, a, and depending on the object from which this message is deleted, uh, there are different mechanisms for that. So uh, for example, in uh, OneDrive for Business, uh, there is a second stage recycle bin, I believe. And this second stage recycle bin, this is where the message remains. And it's not possible to delete it from that um, recycle bin. Uh, so in reality, it's like a rule which is written, which says do not remove the message from the second stage recycle bin. For exchange, it's a little bit different, but um, yeah, you, you get the idea. So it's basically a special rule which is written on exchange side. And if we look, you know, just to give you a tip, Office uh, 365 uh, Security and Compliance PowerShell. Uh, this part right here uh, gives you an idea how to manage your Office 365 security and compliance area using PowerShell. So um, there are some commandlets which are related to um, retention uh, policies. And actually, in reality, this module, uh, the security and compliance module, is based on um, most of it is based on uh, exchange. So uh, this exchange online and security and compliance, they are interrelated in many ways. Uh, 
um, yeah so that's it for now I hope you get an idea um, so when do you use it you know if, if you ask a question it uh, could be useful when you have to protect your data uh, so to preserve your data for a specific area of time or as you know Microsoft does not provide specific backup solutions some companies they could use this as a potential backup uh, solution uh, so yeah that's could be treated as a backup solution or an ar archiving solution right um, it's uh, you still have to consider how much would it cost you because some data is uh, free and you know some uh, quote data quotes uh, are not free so let's say for um, if you set up retention for exchange online it would be free but uh, for, for SharePoint it would count towards your tenant quota so um, yeah make sure you uh, calculate you decide what type of data you want to keep and uh, then to see uh, to ask Microsoft how much would it cost you in the long run um, yeah I hope this video was helpful to you uh, have a great day and bye-bye uh,